Hello, and welcome to the 83rd episode of the Friday Nightmares podcast. I am one half of your hosting team coming to you today from Water Down, Rob Humphreys. Water Down, Ontario, Canada. Did I say my name? Did I say Heather Powell? You have I not. Know. And my name's Heather Powell. And with me is... Oh, good Lord, that inter- intro is so exhaustingly long, Heather. I'll, I'll make mine short and simple, like I always do. <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> Mr. Smoke Show Crawford coming to you from the town of Sports Creek in the county of Genesee, in the state of Michigan, in the United States of America, in the North American continent, in the western atmosphere on the planet earth in the milky way galaxy i'm fully vaxxed boosted and wax and so ready to climax and if you can please get me wet and feed me after midnight i'm the man with the glorious beard aka mother of cats aka the man with the humongous <clears throat> ego aka scott housing aka scott too hottie aka spanky aka one-fifth of the awesome faction that is bullet club old the bang bang gang is here you ain't got none to say about that shit what's that and 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 daddy and daddy are you kind of a daddy no you're kind of like becoming like an adopted daddy oh like saying it as like spare human daddy (laughs) i would prefer maybe father figure because saying daddy sounds weird oh why is that another term that Someone else uses for you? Yeah. Rob Humphreys, I'm Humphreys. looking at you. That's right. That's right. You know, Rob, uh, Scott plans on leaving you. He's told me that he's only pretending to be your friend so that he can drag this out so a massive heel change a turn is going to happen when he joins the NWO, which is our make-believe wrestling fractions, by the way. Um, in case for some reason you you are not a nerd and you don't follow the wrestling podcasts that are out there, um, is it rest? So, wow, wrestling? wow, wow! You're a member uh, of the NWO, which is Tim Hollywood Davis's faction, and you can't even remember his podcast. It's what wrestling? A it's wrestling for I'm, dummies, right? I just don't want to get the lawsuit stuff, the copyright. I ain't gonna tell you. I ain't telling you. Okay, well it that's does. not really nice considering. <laughs> How sick I've been this week, wrestling for dummies. Wow, Scott, that's really mean after how nice I've been. You know, I wasn't going to do this, but you've left me no choice. So I messaged Erica about your introduction just now. Um, We're in a chat group, uh, Scott and Erica and I. And Scott decided that Tubi Tuesday was more important than Friday Nightmares. So we're recording earlier today so he can do that tonight. And I said, I'm sorry if Scott's late. It's because of his 18-hour intro. And even your own woman says, I know, Heather, it's long-winded, coma-inducing, beating his chest, I am Tarzan mentality introductions, faulty, fault to be sure. Oh. Even, even your wifey is like, my shut wifey. the fuck up. Well, she basically is your wifey, is she not? She's my girlfriend. Don't be playing back down on your commitment now. We have a big announcement to make at the end of this podcast as to why we can't record. Good news, everyone. Scott's pregnant. Yay, it's twins. (laughs) It's a boy. It's a boy. We're going to remake Jane Child. So wrestling for dummies, for anyone, and the wrestling for dummies podcast and the whole two episodes we did because unfortunately uh tim couldn't do the last one and i have to try to get the four of us together because i'm the only one that does anything when it comes to these podcasts running or or organizing them you have to admit to that i I don't know what you're talking about (laughs) wasn't for me me, we would record friday nightmares me being me being the smoke show just makes the podcast happen See, this is why we're going to make it to only episode 100, everybody. (laughs) I can't take it anymore. Like, thank God Erica's come in to, like, bring some kind of logic and bring him down. Because, honestly, I never, as I said earlier, 
I never questioned if I could, but I should have questioned if I should when I built up Scott's ego from the guy that, you know, had to drink three drinks before we could even record to the monster that we have today. So, you know what, I'm just going to let the cat out of the bag. We're not going to be recording the month of July because Scott is having a living change and people are moving in with him and we don't know where his recording stuff's going to be. <laughs> he doesn't know when he's going to be able to record again. So we just decided to take the entire month of July off and we'll be back again in August. So if you don't hear from us, despite of the turd that's that Scott's being, we didn't break up. Well, just to make it more clarified here. Erica and her kids. Well, I don't know if you wanted to say that because I called her your, did you hear that, Erica? If I said that, if I would be honored if someone said you were my wifey, just so we're saying, Erica, I'd be honored. She's future, she's future wifey for sure. No, not at this point. I think I'm having a better fucking shot than you do. (laughs) Who's the one that gets to edit the show? I can make it sound like I won't. (laughs) Yeah, you cut it all out. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, oh, baby, you're the best. I'm like, I've always forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Erica and her boys are moving in with me. Uh, so yes, there is going to be a little break that we take. Not because I'm not sure when I'll be able to record. It is well, more no. to... Yeah, because you know where your shit's going to be. Well, I know where my shit's going to be. It's just got to get oh, it all set. Okay. It's mm. the process of the move and getting everything mm. set back up. Because I'm right now, I am in what I call my fish room. Because there's a lot of cartoon fishes painted on the walls, which is my computer room. Uh, I will be moving to the basement uh, where I belong, you know, as a dungeon dweller. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'll be moving the recording setup down in the basement. And I just have a lot of stuff I still need to do around the house to get prepared. And they will be moving in and I'll probably be taking a week off of work to kind of do repainting some remodeling around the house as well just to get everything settled in. But yeah, it's not because I don't know where I'm going to be recording or when I'm going to have time. It's just getting everything set back oh, up. Oh no, it's because his girlfriend said he's not allowed to record anymore. <laughs> oh hell no. She'd be like I think she would be yelling at me, when's the next episode coming out? <laughs> yeah, she needs a fucking break. That's why. It's a lot of work dealing with three children. Congratulations Eric on in your third child you're doing a lot for the state of michigan thank you for your time and your consideration and i still um, i still wear diapers too oh my god <laughs> i like to make the boom booms <laughs> oh my gosh she's like that's my man it's basically though you're not you don't know where you're going to set up your equipment and when you're going to get it set up that's not incorrect it's not well, like i know where you're going to be up. busy the next four. M- well maybe that changes i don't know maybe the kids come in and they do an uno reverse card on you and everything you thought was never going to be the same nope i know exactly where i'm recording or setting up i already showed her outside yeah. <laughs> nope i already kind of actually in the place where we recorded the very first episode Oh, you're going to go back to the beginnings. You're going to, it's going to be an origin story. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm going to record, I'm going to record by myself in person at the table. (laughs) You know, maybe when we do episode, uh, no, I was going to say when we do episode 100, we should do it in person, but we never, we don't want to waste our time podcasting when we get together in person. We learned that after episode two. (laughs) Well, we had a pandemic for a a year and a half in between and then yeah i don't think we've ever ever even thought about podcasting when we got together in person ever yeah i think when we first uh like when the pandemic first happened we're like oh yeah you know when we get back together we'll definitely start recording in person again we're going oh hell no it just more that it just takes too much time away from us just hanging out and just having a good time chatting because we don't see each other enough no and and we're gonna see each other even less now rob told me now that you have a girlfriend and we're gonna see you again he told me that that was rob's that's rob humphrey's Erica's um, not going to be doing that. From Shash or Lady Radio. Well, it's just because Rob's upset that he thinks you won't be spending any time with him anymore. Rob, buddy, Pookie, my dear cuddle bear, we'll always have our time. You know what's funny? So the camera is only showing me your nose and down. So all, when you're talking, oh, really? all I see is your face shoving pickles into your mouth. <laughs> and you're, I think it's pickles. Are you eating pickles? Kiwi. Kiwi. Oh, okay. All yeah. I see is your face. That's It's so like, well, your beard really? and your, you know, your mouth. <laughs> You got a pretty well, mouth there, Scott. <laughs> I was like, because from my angle, it actually shows me from the top of my head down to my chest. Now I can see your glasses. That's um, it's okay. weird. It's That's... okay. Don't worry about it. I know what you look like. It's not like I've forgotten. Oh, look, there you are. <laughs> there you are. There's my special little guy. <laughs> I made the boom booms. 
Honestly, 2023 made the boom booms in horror movies this year. No shit. <laughs> um, man, even the gaslighting is wearing off me. I, uh, I'm having a hard time, Scott. Staying motivated. Really hard time. Yeah, yeah. Like, I actually watched about, I counted from the last time I recorded, which I don't even remember when that was, beginning of June, I think. And I, I think, watched, yeah. And I watched 11 movies since then, and that's... I mean, that's a lot compared to what it was last time, but the funny thing is, I think I'm only going to be talking about six, maybe seven of them, because they weren't yeah. worthwhile. Yeah, I cut a couple of too. I did watch all of Black Mirror uh, this year's, this season's uh, drop. I guess it's the first time it's been dropped in about four years. I really enjoyed mm-hmm. it, by the way. So I don't know. If people are looking for something good to watch and you got Netflix, I recommend Black Mirror. Uh, they're not really films. I don't count them as films. I count them as, like, basically a TV anthology series. But I yeah. loved it. I uh, I thought they were all entertaining. Yes, there's some that are probably better than others in terms of quality and writing and stuff. But all good, all entertaining, all worth the while. And at this point, well, you know, we just need something. So uh, Black Mirror. True. <laughs> Recommend Black Mirror. Um, watch the good little horror documentary. Uh, well, something walks in the wood. Did you see that one? No, that's the one I was telling you about that was on Tubi. I was like, I wanted to watch it. I just haven't yet. Yeah, it's a it's a cute little documentary as well. Um, but yeah, honestly, man, I hope things get better. Maybe this is just a slow time. You know, I mean, you it, have some heavy hitters coming out this year. I was saying it usually is. Usually the first half. We'll have some good movies, but it'll be a majority of a lot of just mediocre stuff. And usually the later half ends up picking up theater-wise and independent-wise. But I will just say, this year has been a slog compared to the last three years. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. that's... Normally we complained about, you know, not a lot coming now or whatever. But this year it's just like, what's come out just... It's not that yeah. great. And yeah. it's like Scott and I in relationships. It's okay if you have no other choice. Like Pickens are slim in Michigan and Pickens are slim in water, waterlog and water down Ontario. So, you know, our partners, our people don't have much. But if you could do better, you would do something like uh like more of a Tay Billy, you know? What? Like high qual Day Bailey. Oh, Dave Bailey. I thought he said yeah, Tay Bailey. Bailey. I think it's a Tay Billy. I'm like, who's Tay Billy? Oh, Dave Bailey, or like a Phil Ray, Jason Gray. See, Any of our like, listeners, actually. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we already know that I am. Uh, I I scored big time with Erica. Like, I I nabbed a good one there. Well, I Whether think it's she... more of a community service program that she's engaged in right I'll now. I'll say it's kind of like a, of giving back. Kind of like a uh, Make a Wish Foundation. Yeah, only, like, make a nerd stream come true. You finally get to lose your virginity. Someone's telling you to wear deodorant. Um, right. still makes, hey, you know, I just, I remember when we first met and you talked to me about the magic tournaments used to be, and you'd be like, yeah, people smelled like a lot of B.O., and I and I thought to myself, it must have been pretty bad. Like you probably walked in there sometimes and almost passed out. Thankfully, it was big enough to where no, I just smelled it and goes, I'm glad I'm not playing that person. Mmm, nice, nice. Well, unfortunately, I couldn't say that about some of the films we watched, and we'll get into those because unfortunately, we did watch them. But we have a mix. We have a mix of the Tubi and the VOD. No theater watches this time around, I don't believe. The only one here that I thought maybe did go to theaters, I don't think it did. I think it went directly to VOD, or maybe it went to select theaters. Um, uh, the there's one, there, uh, yeah, there is, that one did have a did it? Uh, okay. small theatrical run. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'll get into it. I'll start with the first one. I'll start us off with, uh, with a bang. So this movie that I watched, this gem as well, is called Dark Nature. It's an 85-minute runtime. While recovering from an abusive relationship, Joy joins her friend's therapy group on an isolated mountainous retreat led by doctors with experimental methods, and the group is soon forced to confront a monstrous entity. So I watched this movie a long time ago. I don't remember the middle, but I do remember the beginning and the end. (sighs) That tells you, I guess, all you really need to know about this movie. (laughs) If this was other years and this was a pandemic and people were bored and they were looking for things to do, I'd be like, watch this movie because, well, you got nothing else to do. Yeah, um, right. It's a survival film with, you know, obviously the theme of leaving an abusive relationship and gaslighting and which is our which is our word here on Friday Nightmares, gaslighting. Um, eh, 
I would say it's anything to write home about. I don't think you should be running out to watch this. Matt would definitely do not watch this. Matt, you haven't watched it yet, have you? Oh. No. Matt, I saved your life right now. You you owe me a drink. Um, September. September, Matt. You owe me one. Hmm. So, yeah, it has a 2.9 rating on Letterboxd. I don't know. Like, if you really like survival horror with, like, a message, then I would say watch this one. We're, I know, I know. Scott, Scott's face like another message. You can tell. <laughs> We're getting tired of this podcast and shit when it comes to these shitty 2023 movies. Um, you can rent it though on Google Play, Voodoo, Spectrum on Demand, or Direct TV. Honestly, I don't think any of it's. I don't think it's rentable unless you really, really like survival with that uh, with that special message attached to it. Then go for it. If not, then you can skip over this bad boy. Good to know. Now you watch this oh, one, right? Yeah, actually, I forgot. I was like, oh yeah, I gotta. I'll bring the intro in for this one. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, Brian Stitcher <laughs> from the Horror Returns watched this bite fist. <laughs> A lot of people I know have watched this. Uh, but yeah, the, the next one is the Black Demon. Nature bites back. <laughs> <laughs> Almond Paul Sturge's idyllic family vacation turns into a nightmare when they encounter a ferocious megalodon shark that will stop at nothing to protect its territory. Stranded and under constant attack, Paul and his family must somehow find a way to get his family back to shore alive before it strikes again in this epic battle between humans and nature. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this was uh, not bad. I thought it was... <laughs> For a indie shark film, uh, I was thinking, I'm like, oh boy, here we go. This is going to be really ridiculous and dumb and blah, blah, blah. And no, it actually had like a very serious story, was talking about like the effects of mankind on nature with the whole uh, oiling platform and the leak of the oil into the ocean. Um, and had a unique twist that I like. I won't say what it is to the shark. Mm-hmm. But, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I thought. But I thought all the acting was pretty good. Um, I do agree with Tim Davis from Dummies of Horror. Or, yeah, Dummies of Horror. Because uh, I wish there was a little more shark action. But a little less talky talky? Yeah, a little less talky <laughs> more talky. Sharky, more sharky sharky? More chompy chompy. More chompy chompy. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I thought this was fine for a shark movie. Shark movies can be really shitty. So, you know. Oh, just on, like... Yeah. So <laughs> on shark, on shark shitty you know this is to me a middle of the road fun yep. little shark film um there's like a you know ne- a deeper message to this movie as well which you know i don't know you would have to be under a fucking rock to not believe right. uh, there was some scenes in here by the main woman uh fernanda that i really i really dug the way she took charge sometimes um i'll be honest there were some scenes yeah. where i was like fuck yeah bitch you fuck that shit up it's an average film. It's a predictable movie. You kind of know what's going to happen. Nothing is overly shocky shock. But uh, I would agree with your assessment. If you like shark films, then there's no reason not to watch this one. It's not the worst one that's out there, and it's not the best one that's out there. It's somewhere in between. You're looking at a 100-minute runtime, which is reasonable for a film like this. Uh, it is available to rent on Vudu, Amazon, Google Play, YouTube, and Amazon Video, which I don't know why I repeated Amazon. Oh, Amazon Video in the United States, Amazon in Canada. Um, yeah, so I don't know. I would say rent it if you like shark movies. Pay whatever you want. If you like shark films, you have a good time, but I don't think it's a must-watch for 2023. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's it's just right in the middle, and it was, it was fine. Um, but it the was next average... One, yeah, exactly. Very average shark film, which, you know, <laughs> is better than 90% of the shark films we get. Um, and this one, did you see it? No. Okay. I couldn't right. get through it. I was like, this is horrible. I can't fucking watch this. Okay, so the next one uh, on the list is uh, De-Influencer. A trend or die trying. <laughs> Uh, With a 91-minute runtime, the synopsis is an influential cheerleader finds herself held captive by a masked psychopath with a god complex. She must complete a series of sadistic social media challenges to save her life and the lives of her fellow captives. However, the masked kidnapper has a secret agenda for his most recent victim. And, yeah, I thought this one was all right. It was not bad. Um, The acting was just very so-so. But I actually kind of liked 
the message that was portrayed, especially by the end, you find out like more of the reasoning behind this psychopath of why he's doing these things. And like the characters, yeah, I really could care less because, you know, most of the time when you're dealing with influencer characters, they are usually unlikable. And mm. this is basically the same thing with this person. She is not a really likable person just because of, you know, the hoity toity, rich, snooty attitude and the cold look at me famous person so basically but, like your intro i don't know what you're talking about my intro is perfectly fine short sweet simple and to the point i am not long-winded in my intro at all and i don't have like a god complex i mean i'm god but i don't have a god complex <laughs> <laughs> but uh, i actually <laughs> okay never mind. i was gonna tell a sex story i, I had someone oh refer to themselves because I said, oh, my God, during sex. And they said, oh, so you think I'm God? And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Sorry to burst your bubble. Like, I was kind of like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, like, you say it, not yeah, much. Like, ah, thumbs up. <laughs> Proud of you. <laughs> thumbs up. I just, I'm like on top of them. And I'm like, yeah. You guys can't see it right now. I just gave Scott the big old thumbs up. Oh my god, uh, I should have done that. So am or, I God? So I'm God now. Or just, yeah, thumb up. Big or, thumbs up and smile. Or pat on the head. Good job, little guy. <laughs> I right. like the thumbs up. That's so funny, Scott. I'm crying because I'm laughing so much from your expression of it. Oh my god, that's really, really funny. Uh, I should have done that. Anyway, sorry. Influencers and this dude. Uh, god, so, god, like. But yeah, it's uh, it's nothing out of the uh like nothing groundbreaking. Once again, it was an average decent movie. I had my I didn't mind my time with it. Um I'd say it's worth like a dollar ninety nine, two ninety nine rental, especially if you're into watching influencers suffer <laughs> like I am. And uh what was it? Uh the twist. There is like a twist that I actually Oh, there's a twist. <laughs> yeah, what with a twist. But uh it's a twist that I actually didn't see coming. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm still laughing at the thumbs up. <laughs> I feel like moving forward, that's what we should do all the time after we see a movie. We should ask the other one, how was it? And we do, we'll do the two thumbs up smile as a sign that something's not great. <laughs> Scott, that was so funny. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I broke out. Oh, Heather. fuck. Okay. So yeah, so you don't recommend this? Sorry, no, still no. no. Okay. No, I recommend it. <laughs> oh, to Rob Humphreys, do you recommend it? Rob Humphreys. Wait, is there young girls in it? Yeah, there is. I was gonna uh, say just, perfect. I'm I'm not sure how he'll if he'll take this as a yes or a no. So I'll just say yes, Rob Humphreys. I do recommend it because usually if it's a movie I don't recommend, that's what he watches. So we'll see what he does in this one. Mm, yeah, <laughs> you never know. He's a he's a wild card, that man. <laughs> he's another one I'm gonna give those thumbs up to. <laughs> Some point. <laughs> Oh, oh shit. So this movie I watched on Netflix because it was an international film and and usually they're pretty good. Um oh, that was not usually. the case. <laughs> that was not the case. Oh, I shrunk my little window here. Uh-oh. Now I have to try to make it bigger. How did I do this? There we go. Um okay, there we go. So this one is called House of Money in English. I don't know. I think I, I don't even know what the native tongue is, but it's Ilao um in whatever native tongue it is so it's a 95 minute runtime basolo has forever been unlucky with love pursued pressured by her society and her family to tie the knot as a mean to lift her out of poverty she finally meets tunji the perfect man at first she struggles to understand I know, this movie's basically about you. Why a billionaire, well, that's where it differs, oh, uh, would yeah. choose to marry her. But as she accepts his proposal of marriage, a, seizing, a series of increasingly disturbing discoveries lead her to a truth she could never imagine. Um, this was just really, really poorly well done. It's a very low-budget film. I'm surprised Netflix picked it up. It must be a slow year for them, too. Um it's a procession film but it's so oh like it's painful do not watch this movie for free on netflix it's not good it's not it's it's not i regret my choices in life and one of them is watching that movie so 
on to the next, Scotty. All right. So I told Heather when I was making this list, I am going to do a double whams here. And uh, I'm doing, I'm covering two cocaine themed movies here. Both freaking wonderful jazz. Hey, this is what I have to get to you on this. Double thumbs up. (laughs) (laughs) Double thumbs up for the double whams. But uh, All right. So the first one I'm going to talk about, I just watched this morning, and that is Cocaine Cougar. Uh, A black cougar high on cocaine escapes an animal testing facility and wreaks havoc on Los Angeles. Well, for one, black cougar, you mean panther, not cougar, panther. Okay, but, uh, yeah. Well, I guess so, I couldn't really say Cocaine Panther. I know, that'd be like Pink Panther. It doesn't sound as fun as Cocaine Cougar. Right, but this, uh, when I started watching it, I, I knew I was going into something bad. Um, <laughs> where Heather has been gaslit by 2023, I am more just realizing and accepting the fact that me and 2023 just have a dead relationship, and I just keep going through the day just... Not expecting high hopes for 2023 anymore, so I just watch the crap that it gives me, and I just go, it's okay, buddy. I know you're not really trying anymore. You're like, sure, sir, I'll have another. Yeah, why not? But uh, I I knew this was going to be bad, and then I knew this was going to be even worse when I seen directed by Dustin Ferguson. Oh, this... Uh, I'm not a fan of any of his films. He... But he like, literally, this was made... It was a... I'm says, looking it up right now. It says 65-minute runtime. Tubi had, I believe it was a 48-minute runtime. Here's how bad it was. 48-minute runtime. Literally 5-minute credits in the beginning <clears throat> and 12-minute credits at the... Or 5-minute credits at the beginning, 9-minute credits at the end. So 14 of the 48 minutes was credits. Another 10 to 12 well, let me say 10 to 15 minutes was just the director with the camera panning across the countryside in Los Angeles over (laughs) public access music with no story and the occasional snarl and growl from a Black Panther or cougar. The story literally was just random people that you did not follow for more than just a few minutes just see them randomly doing something do it going about their day and then get killed by a very awful cgi cougar and it's so awful that like it barely walks it just oh i'm i'm watching it right now it reminds me of like anime animatronics or cartoons that my friend's son who's 12 sorry 13 comes up with only he can do better yeah like, I never say this about a movie, like, but uh, this is getting zero out of five stars for me. There is nothing. This was laziness. This was. Oh, my God. Different. They released this shit on Blu-ray and DVD. Why? Yeah. So all their friends could buy it? Pretty much. Um, but, yeah, this was maybe 15 minutes, 15, 20 minutes tops of a movie with very little dialogue that had no story. Um, this is getting the straight up zero out of five stars for me. I've never given. I don't give zeros out. Unless, because I usually go, well, you made a movie. You didn't make a movie at this. You just went for a cash grab and made something really fast on your camera after Cocaine Bear became successful. Is anyone actually going to pay to see that, though, that's not a friend of them? Probably not. We'll see. I'm not. But some people are fans of his films. But this is just, no, this was awful, awful, awful. And one other thing that I normally don't say, but I could make a better movie with my friends. Well, maybe you and Erica get a chance to try that out now, huh? Right, exactly. <laughs> Come and but, see uh, the porn hub. I, this is on Tubi, but I do not recommend at all. It is a waste of time. Um, but speaking of double whams, we're going to go into the next cocaine-fueled film. And that is also one that can be found on, on Tubi. And that is Cocaine Shark. Yeah, I'm watching the trailer as you talk. Continue. All right, a 76-minute runtime. A uh, mafia drug lord has unleashed a new, highly addictive stimulant on the streets called HT25. Well, this one uh, at least looks like it has a budget something. Yeah, it's a low budget, but... Uh, oh, never mind. Um, derived from sharks held captive in a secret lab, and which causes monstrous <laughs> side effects. After an explosion and leak at the lab, an army of mutated, bloodthirsty sharks and other creatures are set loose on the world. I originally watched this trailer because I was curious, and I'm going, oh, hell no, I am not watching this. Then for Tubi Tuesday, 
we kind of uh, did a double feature night of bad movies, and Eric is like, let's watch Cocaine Shark. I'm like, you're going to regret it. I watched the trailer, and this is not going to be good. Well, after watching Cocaine Cougar, Cocaine Shark's a masterpiece, because Cocaine Shark actually had a story, actually was a fully fleshed out movie. The effects are really non-existent and really crappy with some bad CGI, some bad like claymation something or other. Sharks don't do cocaine. In fact, the sharks aren't even really sharks. They're just mutated like crab monsters. Uh, the acting is corny, but I think they knew what they were doing with this movie and just kind of being cheesy with it. And mm. um, But it was not entertaining, but it was a fully made independent film, so it gets way more credit than Cocaine Cougar. What I think happened with this was this was a movie that was made that didn't have a title. Cocaine Bear came out, and they said, hey, let's make this Cocaine Shark, just to kind of jump on the success of Cocaine Bear. Yeah, I don't know, man. This is uh, these two these two trailers. Gems. Yeah. Gems. See, like I said, um, I'm kind of in an abusive relationship with 2023 right now. Yeah, you aren't kidding. So I guess if anyone really decides that they feel the need to watch this, they should go to Tubi. Yep, they're both on Tubi okay. for free. I would not pay for them. And only if you are wanting to see the absolute train wrecks of what Cocaine Bear has caused. And hopefully my dog barking isn't driving anybody. Oh, man. No, it's okay. He's like, he's voting how much he hated these fucking films. He's like, and I had to watch them. Like, I was with Dad. It was terrible. These fucking suck. Well, at least you brought, like, an actual good Tubi film. Like, let's acknowledge that. Oh, the next one? Yes. Yes. She came from the woods. Yeah, she did. <laughs> no, this came in the woods. <laughs> it's a different yeah. one. Oh, 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 my bad, my bad. Now, I have that it's 12 minutes here, which I know it's not 12 minutes long. Uh, uh what? It was filmed in 2018. I think they did a short, and then they did a... Oh, uh, I, I think you're on the wrong one. Oh, is there a different one? Yeah. Yeah, because okay. was 101 minutes I'm looking at. Awesome. Why don't you read the synopsis then, since you can you have to write one up. All right, so this is called She Came From The Woods. Uh, 101 minute runtime. Uh, the tagline, cruelest summer ever. In 1987, a group of counselors accidentally unleashes a decades-old evil on the last night of summer camp. Very simple synopsis. It is a nice nod to 80s camp slashers, and I think they do the they do it justice. This is a Tubi original that actually plays on the tropes of 80s slashers, but added like a supernatural uh, thing to it. Uh, mm, some, yeah. Some fun characters, some douchebag characters, some funny lines, like some decent gore. Like it was. All around, I found this to be a very entertaining to be original. Like, it's, like this is like this is actually just a very entertaining movie. Let alone mm-hmm. to be original. I thought this movie was great, and guaranteed we're gonna have the negative Nellies out there who shit on Friday Nightmares and want to think that we don't have good taste and that we're broken. That may be true, but we enjoyed this film, and I liked it a lot. I thought it was fun for a yeah. free watch on Tubi. It was. And summer camp horror, summertime, you know, it was fun. It was a fun little thing. I don't think it's going to grace as anybody's top 10. So if you're watching movies to just build your top 10, I don't know, probably don't watch this. But I liked it a lot. I had a good time. And it had definitely someone that I was happy to see when they got killed. Yes, 100%. And, and, like, fucking die. and even like some of the, like, just, uh, what do you call it? Subliminal, not even subliminal, but uh, underlying themes to that character, too, which I was like, ah, okay, movie, you're kind of going deep with us. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. I thought it was a really, really good film. Um, and, uh, 100%, I think, it, I think it was watchable. I don't know if Tim and Rob and. I think Tim would have fun with it. I think, think Rob. So? Okay. I think Rob. I want Rob to watch this. I'm. I would be curious to hear his thoughts. He doesn't like anything, though. He loves me, so that's all that matters. Um. Uh, so you think? He's my boo. He's my boo. <laughs> uh, what about Daniel and, uh, from Loof Loof? Loof? Loof yeah. Loof. Oh, uh, I think, I think Loofy would like it. Yeah, I think Loofy would have fun with us. Yeah. Um, I think he likes summer camp. Yeah. Summer and, camp. Uh, and I wanted to also say this is the same director who did 10 Minutes to Midnight with, uh, what is her name? Uh, Carolyn Williams from uh, last year or 2021. 
Yeah, I think it's 2021. But uh, yeah, like so it's it's his movie, but it looks like he had more of a budget with this one. Nicely, nicely, nicely. Make the movies nicely. Yeah. All right. Brooklyn, 45, most recent, well, one of the most recent drops on Shutter. This one is a 92-minute runtime. The ghost of your past would like to have a word with you. On a freezing evening in December 1945, five military veterans gathered together in an ornated parlor of a Brooklyn brownstone. Best friends since childhood, they have reunited to support their troubled host, but when his invitation for cocktails turns into an impromptu seance, the ghosts become all too real. So, a lot of people have watched this film. Uh, Tim Davis, Matt Wood, Rob Humphreys, um, Sandra Kane, everybody. So, everyone's sitting around this range. Matt Wood is the lowest. Shocker. At two and a half stars, Matt. Uh, Tim is sitting at three and a half. Rob is at three. You and Tim are tied at three and a half, and Mr. Sandra Kane's at four. I probably sit between three and a half and four. I did enjoy this movie quite a bit. I thought it had some really good character development in it. I found the characters all interesting. The acting was very solid. Um, I was shocked about what happened. I'll be honest. This movie surprised me, the outcome. Um, I think for a free watch, well, you pay for Shudder, but as part of your Shudder subscription, I think it's totally worth it. Um, I don't, this may be in some people's top tens. I guess it depends on, on how much you enjoy it. It's probably my top 20. That's how much I enjoyed it because of the dialogue and the characters in it. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. What do you think? I thought it was good. Um, I did enjoy the characters. Uh, like you, I was also shocked by what happens. Um, and we can never do lo- do wrong with Larry Festin. He's always mm. an ama- he's always an amazing actor. And the guy, the general in this, I think his name was, I know him from something, and it's been driving me nuts because I can't figure out what movie he is from. And I know him. I freaking know him. And I don't know why. Um, oh, but- um, let's see. He's been in Fight Club, Halloween, the Rob Zombie one, hmm. Mirrors, Nightmare Cinema. Maybe it was Nightmare Cinema. The Hills of Eyes. He was in The Hills of Eyes, really. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that was not those. That's that's not the movies that was ringing a bell to me. But um, anyways, uh, the one thing I will say though is this coming from the director of We Are Still Here, I expected something a little more bombastic, crazy mm. with the violence and like I didn't really get that with this. This was much more of a slow. Mm-hmm. conversational yeah yeah it was yeah. more like a whodunit conversation like and like i say i still liked it but i was just a bit let down because i went in going oh shit it's the guy that did we are still here oh this is gonna be fucking insane and i was just like no but it wasn't bad it, and like i say it, it deserves a seven at least because yeah it was entertaining yeah and i liked it but. it was a modern day safe way to discuss racism yes because if we put it in 1945, we can talk about how all the parallels compared to today mm-hmm. without saying that it all compared to today, right? Exactly. Um, so this is available on all the shutters, uh, whether you have it with AMC or, you know, through Prime. I definitely think it's worth the watch. So does Scott. I think everyone else's ratings with the exception of Matt. So I don't know, maybe two and a half stars for Matt means it's tolerable. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think for Matt's kind of like I think Matt's kind of like me. A two and a half is you watched it, you weren't offended by it, you were, but you also didn't love it. You're, it's just right in the middle. Right. Um, so yeah, so check it out. It's on the study, and it's it's entertaining at least. The next one is Jake and Mine. This is the most recent Hulu release. It's an eighty-eight minute runtime. Believe anything but your own memory. Um, when Billy finds herself reliving different versions of the same first date. She must break out of a series of loops created by somebody, I'm going to say. Um, Yeah, this is a very interesting film. It talks about gaslighting. (laughs) And it makes Uh, no, um, you know, shock that it's talking about gaslighting. I think that it is well done. Matt gave this three stars. Um, I probably would sit between two and a half stars to three. I think for a, this reminded me of the Into the Dark 
movies. Oh, okay. That came out a couple of years ago. I found it on the same level of enjoyable I found the Into the Dark films. Okay, gotcha. Um, which I enjoyed them. I think this is a fun, easy movie to watch. I think that if you have Hulu, there's no reason why not to. I don't know if this would hit someone's top 10, but I think they would be interested on how the outcome of this movie goes. So yeah, if you got Hulu, check this out. It is called Jagged Minds, and you're only looking at an 88-minute runtime, so it's not overstaying its welcome at all. All right, good to know. This is one I do need to watch, just because, for one, we do have our Hulu category, so I need to yep. watch anything that drops there, because they don't they don't drop a lot of horror. So, yeah, got to watch pretty much everything of theirs. Um, they don't always drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. But um, I will jump on to the next one, and when I talked about earlier the uh, double feature I did with Erica for Cocaine Shark on uh, To Be Tuesday, the first movie we picked, the trailer kind of had us fooled into believing this was kind of like a... Wrong Turn meets Children of the Corn type movie. And so we were like, ooh, okay, this looks interesting. And that is called, and it is Those Who Call. A 90-minute runtime, every, every trespasser will be punished. When their car breaks down at a small Texan town, two sisters must do everything in their power to survive a sadistic pagan cult. Um, two sisters must do everything to sur- in their power to survive a sadistic pagan cult. Um, you know... More like two sisters must continuously and annoyingly argue and yell at the top of their lungs while they're lost in the woods and making every dumb decision possible. You want to watch a 90-minute movie where 70 minutes of it are uh, just these two dumb idiots arguing back and forth and, like, hating each other then being friends with each other and then hating each other and screaming, Why are we, where are you? Where are we at? Why are we lost? And it, it just, oh, every every little thing about this movie annoyed the fucking piss out of me. These characters are so, I yeah, hate them, hate them, hate them. I did not like these characters whatsoever. I wanted them to die, and it was the most boring movie ever and very grating on the ears. There's my review. <laughs> so, so don't watch it? No, Eric and I were very just annoyed at this movie. <laughs> Not worth it. Then uh, our good buddy Matt Wood gave it one and a half stars. Tim mm. Walker gave it one and a half stars. Donna Nelly, who tends to like a lot of things, uh, gave it two and a half stars. I gave it two. So that's a not recommend. Yeah, this was a new, you know, bad, bad movie. Bad. Bad movie. Bad. Well, I guess I'll move on to my next one. So I watched Pollen. This was an 86-minute runtime. The seeds of fear are everywhere. After a senior co-worker assaults a bright-eyed young woman, her dream job becomes a living nightmare as she tries to keep her career together while being tormented at work, at home, and in her dreams by a mysterious tree monster. This is very much a movie about symbolism. If you enjoyed symbolic movies that have come out over years, like Swallowed, the pregnant woman that saw, swallows and uh, like random objects. Um, the one that came out last year with um, it was on uh, Resurrected. Yeah, Resurrected. I oh think yeah, it's yeah, 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 yeah. Um, resurrection, resurrection, resurrection. Like if you enjoy those kind of films, then I think you'll like this film. Okay. Because it's very much paced the same. It's built on character development. You have a protagonist that. You want to root for, but you can tell that she is insecure and trying to make and navigate really tough decisions. The acting is quite good for a low-budget film, and the content definitely deals with relevant current issues and uses monsters as a way to kind of tie it in. Um, comes It Comes at Night would probably be very... Yeah, I think that is that what it was last year. It comes at night or take back the night. Take back the night. Take back the night. Would it be another comparable to this one? So I think if those are the kind of films you like, then I would say this is worth your time. Um, Matt Wood gave it three and a half stars. Tim Davis gave it two and a half. So I think that's pretty fair for where you stand. Um, I'm probably sitting at a three and a half to four because I enjoyed the messaging behind it. I enjoyed the layup, the the build up to it, and I like movies like this. But I can appreciate that it's not for everybody. But if the movies I've suggested are something that you would like, I recommend watching it. It's available on Apple TV, Google, Voodoo, Microsoft Store, and YouTube for rent. And any rental price makes sense. 
and yet again, if this sounds like something you would enjoy. Okay, because yeah, this is one I've been curious about. The cover definitely had caught my eye, so it was one that yeah. I was possibly going to watch. Uh, but the next one, I know this is uh, one that you and I both watched. And we did, is, yeah. And this is the one that we were talking about earlier about if uh, it had a theatrical release. It had a very limited theatrical release, I believe, but that is the sequel to Becky, The Wrath of Becky. Uh, running at an 83-minute runtime, Hell hath no fury like a 16-year-old scorned. Two years after she escaped a violent attack on her family, 16-year-old Becky attempts to rebuild her life in the care of an older woman a kindred spirit named Elena. However, when a violent group known as the Noblemen break into their home, attack them, and take their take their beloved dog, Becky must return to her old ways to protect herself and her loved ones. Um, this one, uh, how do I say this? I had fun with this movie, but if you go into Becky, expect, and then you go into Wrath of Becky, expecting the same thing as Becky... You'll be a bit disappointed. This mm, definitely, that's good to say it. this will, this definitely takes goes the Fast and Furious sequel route, where it gets a little more ridiculous and stupid as the as it goes on, and they have definitely tied it up to look like there will be more sequels to this that are going to be even more dumb and ridiculous. But yeah. that being said, this was still a lot of fun. Uh, Becky was just as sadistic as always. Sean William Scott, I thought, did a great job as a villain. Um, yeah, he was great. Yeah, and the noblemen are basically the Proud Boys, and they kind of are, like, talking about uh, the Capitol riot that happened in a, yeah. in a way. Um, but the one thing I will say is they definitely ramped up the action, but kind of put the over-the-top kills on the back burner. I'd say there was only one yeah. really memorable kill. And that was kind of in the beginning. Yeah, I would agree with you. I I don't know. I I like Lulu Wilson. I think she's quite enjoyable in this film. I I agree. I think Sean Sean William Scott is great, and I think Jill Larson is actually quite good. Who is um, she? The uh, old woman, the older lady. Yeah. Okay. I think the role she plays, and I think even the side characters, um, Michael Sorrow, Aaron Dallas Villa, and Matt Angel were good. Like I actually liked them as well. I think this is one where I'll say it's a good thing they chose good cact good actors. Yeah. Um, because where I felt the first movie carried itself on its plot and its kills and it's like holy fuck, I can't believe this little girl's taking revenge like this. Um, I felt this one was a little far fetched. Yeah. I felt it was rushed. Um, it felt like it. Right. It felt rushed. Um, it is only an eighty three minute runtime. Um. <clears throat> I'm not saying it had to be an hour and a half, but I don't know. Yeah, like where the first movie kind of jumps into like the action right from the start. And Becky is like getting her revenge pretty much like 20 minutes into the movie. Things are really kind of ramping up. This one, it doesn't seem like it ramp like starts ramping up till like the last the, the third act. It's like they ran, like, it's like they went somewhere and they're like, oh shit, we gotta wrap up filming, wrap up filming, wrap up filming. Like, if that's what it felt like. Yeah, I could see that. Um, like, for some reason, they had to move on. And to me, it got a little just over the top silly at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the very end, especially, I'm just like, yep, this is where we're going, the Fast and the Furious sequence. Yeah, like, to me, that was disappointing, but I enjoyed it otherwise. Yeah, I say it's an easy, fun watch. I definitely recommend. If you were a fan of the first one, just go in expecting this one to be a little more over the top and silly, but it's still fun. And the actors definitely are the reason this film was fun. And Sorry, I was uh, dying there, coughing away. No, um, that's all right. And I was going to say, I'll, I'll let everybody know where it's available. Perfect. Um, thank you. Yep, it's available to rent on Amazon, Apple TV, Vudu, Google Play Movies, uh, and then, yeah, that is it. And the next one is me, so I will bring that oh. to you. Yep. Uh, all right, so this one was a good old uncorked film. And I think this may be my first uncorked film of the year. Uh, but that is The Devil Comes at Night with an 80-minute runtime. He will consume your soul. A washed-up boxer searching for his inheritance must fight for his life when he is trapped in his deceased father's farmhouse by a local cannibal cult. So, shocker, surprise, this is a cult movie. But, uh... 
I went into this going, oh boy, uncorked. What do we got here? I actually came out of this thinking it wasn't too bad. It was uh, definitely like just above average, uh, but the acting I found to be hokey, but not bad. Um, wish there would have been some on screen kills, but most of the stuff was done off screen, which I'm probably guessing is due to budget. But the storyline. Well, it just kind of jumped, you almost placed, like, you almost dropped you in the middle of the storyline, because you're just going, oh, shit, what's going on? Okay, what's going on? But, like, after that, like, it kind of kept me intrigued on wanting, wanting to know what the hell is going on and why this guy is getting surrounded by this cult all of a sudden. Um, and I want to say, uh, didn't expect the uh, bit at the end, either. Interesting. So do you recommend it enough? Yeah, I'd recommend it if you can find it streaming somewhere or if, like, you can find it for, like, a two ninety nine rental. Like, yeah, it was just above average. Yeah. yeah. It was, like, just an above average movie. It wasn't terrible, but it was I – definitely, I definitely did not hate my time with it. Well, it's good to know. Well, I guess the last two are mine, right? Yep. So – this first one is uh, The Lake. This was actually an international film that I was quite excited to watch. It's uh, from Thailand. And finally, to be picked it up, thank God, because now it has subtitles to it. Ah, Tim Davis said this best. This, you really got to like Godzilla films to enjoy this film. Uh, monster Will Rise. Uh, when a mysterious monster rises from the Mekong River and attacks Burnkong cuts off people from the outside world, officials and the people in the area, including Chinese scientists who accidentally... I don't think they were Chinese. I think they were Thai as well. But anyway, um, <laughs> who accidentally came into conduct research in Thailand, all must force... All forces must be mobilized to catch this crazy monster before it's too late. Um, and special effects in this are actually quite decent. There's some really good scenes, though. It kept I kept thinking of, remember the Godzilla movie where Pop Daddy was in the music video? He was like, yeah, come with yeah. me. Na, 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 we na, 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 We do not speak of that movie. Oh, man. So there are it's parts that remind me of that music video. So anyway, oh. um, it, it, I can say that for someone who was very looking forward to it, I was a little disappointed. Was it watchable? Yes. So if you like Lake Monster movies and you're looking for something free on Tubi, absolutely it's it's worth it um would i recommend renting it probably not why would you when you can watch it on tubi for free it is available on apple google tubi microsoft store and youtube good to know this one might be one uh i suggest eric and i watch on uh tonight when yeah we're on tuesday yeah i think you guys could watch it and you would enjoy it enough like it's nothing over the top great but it's not horrible either right all right all right everybody gear up now we got an IFC fucking A24 love child coming. That's not ah, either one. Shit. It's ooh, by ooh. Ne uh, some place called ne some company called Neon. So is it a company, Neon? So is it Any's Men Part Two? No, this one had dialogue <laughs> in it. At least. So uh, this is called The Sanctuary. It is a 96 minute runtime. His rules, his game, her rules. Confined to a hotel room, the heir to a hotel empire and a dominatrix who has primed him for success become locked in a bottle of wits and wills as he tries to end his relationship with her. This is a movie that was praised at independent film festivals. I can already hear Rob Humphreys now. It shown at TIFF in 2022. TIFF stands for Toronto International Film Festival. And for people who don't go to that because only so many people can go, Rob, it came out this year in 2023 is when it got major distribution. So you can suck my dick because Ooh. that's what we're going to go with the year of. Hey, that's so, my job. To suck my dick? To suck Rob's dick. But I told Rob to suck my dick. I guess you I can still suck his. Yeah, it'd be like a bang bang gang. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> I guess that makes me God. <laughs> Erica, just ignore everything you're hearing right now. Rob is Erica not my lover. Like, yes, he is. <laughs> Man, you broke up with Tim pretty quick. You dropped him like a hot potato. Oh, that's because that motherfucker just calling me all sorts of evil shit nowadays. He he turned traitor and stole you from me. Like you were my partner. And then you bashed me in the back of the but, head. With but a we're still chair. doing the podcast together. That's because I'm, I'm allowing it to happen. Allowing it to happen. <laughs> Thumbs up. 
Spoil. Tim, Pookie, I do love you, baby. I just got to give you shit. But I love Rob as well. But Erica is the one that I truly love. Sorry, guys. Holy fuck, we get it, okay? Erica knows that you love her. Shit. Or Wait, oh, sorry. She's blowing up my phone now. She's oh, like, damn. you can still get those kids into school, right? For free. You know it, Erica. Quit stealing my girl. Hashtag steal Scotty's girl. Hashtag, Hashtag 2023 goals. Hashtag over this shit. I'm done. All right, you should go back to, oh, no, you got to listen to how great Sanctuary is. So anyway, <laughs> if I haven't won you over with this battle of wits, it's, this is very much for people who like clever dialogue and, you know, this back and forth and someone acting over the top and, you know, I don't know, some other dude being like, oh, no, I don't know how to react in this situation and like all these kind of play on words. This is a movie for you. If that's what you like, you're going to enjoy this film. Other years, I think I would have enjoyed this. But I found it so pretentious. And so like, oh, look at us with our dialogue. Mm, look how clever we're being right now. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. And right, hey, fuck, man. If that's your jam and you like that, good for you. I, I thought even that it was a ripped off version, like it would try to explore sexuality, but it didn't in such a fucking piss poor way, in my opinion. Mm. Um, it was it was fine. But, you know, the average rating for this is 3.5 stars is what people have given it. So obviously people do like it, but no, go into this knowing that it would be if A24 and IFC Midnight had a love child and it was weird. OK, think Lamb, only weirder. Oh, boy. And, you know, you Either you like it or you won't like it. It's going to be one or the other. So you take a, a risk if you choose to rent it. It is available on DirecTV and Amazon Video if you are interested. And that concludes the end of our 2023s. Yes, it does. Do you want me to do my now. older watch? First? Sure, you might as well. You might as well. All right. So let me pull that up real quick. So once again on Tubi Tuesday, Erica introduced me to a film that was uh, from the 80s that I have always wanted to see and just never have. And she was kind of shocked that I never watched it. And that is Toby Hooper's Invaders from Mars, 1986. It's got a 100 minute runtime. Their conquest has already begun. He knows they're here. In this remake of the class, classic 50s, which I did not know that was a remake, a uh, sci-fi tale, a boy tries to stop an invasion of his town by aliens who take over the minds of his parents. His, his least liked school teacher and other townspeople, with the aid of the school nurse, the boy enlists the help of the U.S. Marines. Uh, so, yeah, this is basically... Fuck yeah! America, fuck yeah! But uh, now this is... This was a lot of fun. It's totally 80s, totally cheesy... But uh, it definitely reminds me a lot of Invasion of the Body Snatchers and the Faculty. And mm. I had so much fun with this. The aliens look freaking ridiculous, but awesome because they're all practical effects. And I don't know how they actually work, but they are hilarious looking and kind of amazing. The main hive mind is reminds me of Krang from a uh, fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the brain that sits nice. inside the body. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, this had uh, Karen Black starred in this, uh, which for like uh, the newer age generation would know her as Mother Fly Mother Firefly from House of Thousand Corpses. She passed away before Devil's Rejects. Uh, but she was also in Trilogy of Terror and a lot of other films. Like Karen Black's really well known in the horror genre. Um, but holy shit, this was just so much fun. I had like I'm glad I finally knocked off another Toby Hooper movie off my list. I think I've seen all of his films now, so nice. I'm glad I got to watch this one. Definitely a definitely feels more like Texas Chainsaw Massacre two over Texas Chainsaw Massacre. A lot more on the sillier side. Good to know. I'll probably skip it. Um, it probably doesn't sound like a Heather movie. Yeah, you're so, not really into the sci-fi horror. Part. No, I'm not. So, but it's up for this one. So I was digging through the Shutty, uh, just trying to find some stuff. And I added this one to my list a while ago. It's a British film. Await further instructions. And it was made in 2018. Contain corrupt control. A dysfunctional family awake on Christmas morning to discover they are sealed in their house by a mysterious black substance. On television, a single line of the text reads, stay indoors and await further instructions. Oh, I heard of this. Um, 
Yeah. Paul Mac gave it three stars. Oh, Paul Stevenson. Oh, shouts out to Paul Stevenson from the uh, Who Will Survive podcast on the Legion Network. Great podcast that's been defunct now for several years. Um, Dave Bailey gave it, or Sandra Kane gave it 3.5 stars. Did you watch it? No, this is one that I heard of. Like, I as soon as you were describing that plot synopsis, I'm like, oh, okay, yep, this is the movie I've heard of. I have not seen it. I had a really good time with this one. I actually found it quite enjoyable. I thought that it, obviously it's a, you know, a bigger political message. So, you know, right. I like my political messages. But I thought that it was really cool effects. It moves quickly. You hate people who you're supposed to hate. You like people who you're supposed to like. And there's some very, very good British actors in it. David Bradley's in this, known more recently from the Harry Potter films, but has been in a lot of stuff over the years. Sam Gritz, well-known British actor as well. Um, some really, really good, good characters in this. It, it moves quickly. It's a worth a watch on Shudder. If you have Shudder and you're looking for something that's maybe home invasion-y, a little political, um, a little bit kind of like that torture of getting instructions and you have to follow through, I check. I recommend this one. Okay. I really did enjoy it. I recent found footage, well, not recent, but a found footage I hadn't heard of before called Home Movie was dropped on Shudder from 2008. And I just want to save everybody's time by telling them don't watch it. It's boring. It's horrible. Tim, whatever you do, do not watch a failure found footage segment on your show. I was so disappointed at how lackluster this film was. It has really great reviews. I don't know why. Um, maybe, maybe... <clears throat> There's no reason why they're filming throughout this entire thing. Absolutely none. Some of the shit they film makes no sense. Um, it's based on a family who kids turn evil over a series of years. So they're filming this over a series of years. Hmm. And they're filming like, random play dates that the kids have at their house and random fights they have in the kitchen. And like, not where like the movies where it was set up, like they're filming for like a a haunted house and the camera's right. there and it catches a fight. Like it's just them filming stupid shit. Um, <laughs> skip this one. Don't watch it on shutter. Not a good fan good footage. Know. If you're a fan footage completionist, you can save your time and your energy and skip this bad boy. Good to know. Yeah. I'll say I'd never even heard of this one. It just dropped this week. Um, I saw it and I was like, Oh, fan footage. Like, you know, I, I dig fan footage a lot. I'm always trying to find new fan footage. Cause honestly, when you like double down on fan footage, you watch a lot of them, it's really hard to find new ones. Um, and yeah, Well, new good ones. On Tubi, new there's, good a, ones. there's a lot on Tubi that are... Yes. Good. Sorry, good ones. And I and I trusted Shudder, and I thought, well, if Shudder picked this up, it's got to be good. Oh, well, Shudder also picked up Skin and Marink. Yeah, you can't always trust the Shudder, can you? So yeah. I, uh, I do not recommend it. But for our Out of the Dark, we're going to be skipping our What's New because, well... There's not much that's new. What's new is Scott and Mai's life. Scott's Scott has multiple relationships going on, as you guys all found out today, as he's trying to cover. No, 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 Erica, baby, you're the one. You're the one. No, no. These other guys don't mean anything. Uh, these other guys, they're, they're my side pieces. Yeah, but baby, you're my number one. You're my number one. So we... Uh, she, she's my we, girl. She's my girl. So we picked a couple of trailers. Uh, this was a little hard because we had some other trailers in mind, but they haven't dropped yet. So we weren't able to show them. But we found some gems. And we found some gems that other people aren't talking about. Like this first well, one. Well, there's two on here that uh, horror Dummies of Horror talked about. But they didn't talk about this one. No, not the first one. That's why. I know. They talked about the other ones, and that's fine. We're going to have to just hang on to their coattails, which is fine because they basically have ripped off our show over the years. So, right exactly. um but what did you think of this one? The Flood. An hour and 33 minute runtime. And oh, everybody, it's an alligator film. Fuck yeah. I am down for this. Uh, this looked like a lot of fun. It reminded me a lot of, what was it, Crawl? Yeah, Crawl. Only like, oh this has a lesser budget than Crawl. It's a Lionsgate film, which can go either way with Lionsgate's film. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But this shit has like uh, Kaffer, Casper Van Dien, Nick, yep. is it Wienlin, Nikki Whelan, and Not some sure blonde chick. I don't know who yeah, the blonde like, chick is. Definitely a lot of unrecognizable characters to me, but it looked ridiculous. It looked fun. 
basically about these, uh, I think it was what, these prisoners that get dropped off to kill the alligator or something like that? Like, and they're saying, like, oh, yeah. Of, oh, if you help us, you can get released from your sentence early or something along those lines. Right. It, it looks silly, ridiculous, and over the top, but it's an alligator movie, and it looks like it has a decent special effects behind it, so I'm like, I'm all in. The alligator looks decent, and you know what? It's going to be a quick wham, bam, thank you, ma'am kind of film. You know, you, you got a fucking alligator that's coming in to fuck shit up. It's not super deep. It's coming out July 24. July 14th, 2023. Um, the chicks in this is an Aussie actor, so probably um, maybe Tim knows who she is. She's pretty, so maybe he knows who she is being through that. Cool. But yeah, I had a good time watching this one. I was like, oh yeah, fuck yeah. I'm down to pound. Fuck yeah, I'm down to pound. Yep, I love me some creature features or animal attack movies. and Hell yeah, this looks like a fun one. And then this was just one of the only other previews I could find. So what did you think of this one? Bird Bar Box Barcelona. We're back again, Netflix round two. Here we go. Bird Box Barcelona. Uh, meh. I'm. It looks like Bird Box, which I was very <laughs> meh about. Anyways, so uh, this looks like more of that, which is basically uh, a quiet place, but you're blind. So yeah, it's fine. It, look, it looks like uh, almost like the same movie, just in Spain. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. You know, the only thing I want to see is the dog wears a blindfold. Did you see that in the trailer? The oh, dog wears a blindfold yes. on? Yes, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I want to see that shit. I'll be honest. I might watch this movie just for that scene. It looks like it's a very much a, a rinse and repeat of the last one, which is fine. The last one did very well. I think Tib said it was one of the most grossing views movies on Netflix, so fuck. Yeah, that all had to do with Sandra Bullock's doing it, being in it too, though, right? Well, so. That and the memes. All the memes right. that from it. All that shit helps. So I'll probably check it out. Um, but yeah. And then what about this final one here? Cobweb. Yeah, this one. Okay, so this stars Anthony Starr, who is a Homelander from The Boys. And he always plays just like these, just kind of giving you bad vibes type person. And he does that again in this, but it's basically about this kid that thinks um, from what I'm gathering from the trail trailer that something is wrong with either the house or his parents mm -hmm. and his parents are acting strangely but yeah this looks creepy as hell like I am on board for this one I think this is uh, this is now my second most hyped film next to Last Voyage of Demeter I, I think it kind of reminds me of the I feel like this is going to be one that was popular like Black Phone was last summer yeah you know what I mean? Like, there's a young man in it, and he is in a situation where you're unsure what's happening around him, what's real, what's not, and what's going to happen to him, and what the outcome will be. And and I think it, uh, I think it should be really cool. It's coming out July 21st, and I think it's coming to theaters. Yeah, it might be one of those select theater kind of things because I have mm. not seen any like trailers for it, or it might just like get just like quietly dropped in theaters and then end up not doing mm -hmm. well because of that mm -hmm. it's not enough marketing but who knows because yeah I, I didn't know about this movie until tim davis brought it up on his uh, his most recent episode of dummies of horror when they're covering trailers and then you brought it up and i was like oh shit yeah that makes me want to watch it i forgot about that um but yeah so I, I, it's I actually it. based off of the edward the edward allen oh where was i edgar allen poe edgar allen poe's poem the telltale heart Really? Mm -hmm. I did not get that vibe from that trailer at all. Yeah. So it should oh, be interesting oh, then. I kind of did, but I can't Let's say it here. here. Let's see if we can find a copy of the poem. Oh, it's like a short story. Oh, yeah. my. Yeah, Edgar Allan Poe, yeah. Interesting. Cool. Well, those look like some fun things to look forward to. A little silly alligator flick, a a movie about walking around with blindfolds on the entire time. And also finally a, a movie about gaslighting because we haven't had enough of that this year. So exactly. woo, gaslighting. Yay. In 2023 and it's terrible movies that it keeps giving us. So we'll hopefully have some better ones on the next episode. Well, we got a full month here where Scott is not recording, not because 
He doesn't know where his stuff was go. We we just don't want him to feel pressured to set everything up because we don't know what life will look like until August. Yeah. Well, I can already tell you what life's going to look like. It's going to be oh, for busy. Sakes. Then we're recording in two weeks. Fuck this shit and taking time off. That's it. You say you're fine and ready to go. Why are I, we stopping when, then? When did I say we're fine and ready to go? I just said, I know what it's going to look like, but yeah, it's going to be busy. You may be making your own fucking sound footage film at this point. Maybe you guys should. You know, we could film one and it'd be like the boys thinking there's like a ghost in your house and, you know. It's just me making uh, terrible sex jokes. Well, I used to joke with Brendan Orlick that his, uh, both his brother and him, like, had to take the same bed with them to college. Like, I guess they, like, his brother used it and then he went to college later. And I was like... All the ghosts of One Night Sands. I thought I meant something to you. You said you called me. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Thumbs God. up. <laughs> Smile. <clears throat> That's what Erica's going to do next time she sees you. You're going to be like, and and I can podcast today, right, Erica? Right, Erica? I can podcast today, right, Erica? Right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm you get. That's I'm what you get. The consumption. It might that's, not even do it. That's what you get. Teasing Erica. That's what you get. She's not, not gonna. Teasing Erica. I'm making fun of you because she's gonna move in and be like, "So why are you taking a month off?" And you be like, "Oh, Heather said I had to." <laughs> exactly. I'll turn this around on you. Right. Because you do the editing, you have all the power. That's right. All right. I'm gonna cough my my nose out again and my throat out. Can you take over and I don't know maybe do a Legion podcast like. Proud Legion podcast membership. Oh, wow. All right. Expect me to do all the work here. Okay. So uh, we are obviously proud members of the Legion podcast. And you can also subscribe to the Legion Patreon. I am doing a terrible job because this oh, is man. totally something Heather does that I feel so awkward. Uh, there's, a, there's a Patreon for the Legion. So we are proud members of the Legion podcast network. You can subscribe on any podcast service you listen to, whether that be Spotify or Apple or whatnot. If you are so inclined and you would like to become a Patreon, we encourage you to. You can get lots of access to new shows and uh, codes that they give away and other cool things. And because Scott needs a month off because he knows where everything is going to go and knows exactly how things are going to look, but we can't record for a month because Jesus he's so Christ. organized. Scott, what what do you have to say to the good people of the Friday Nightmares community? I quit! <laughs> I quit! Is that what you wanted to hear? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? No, we gotta make it to episode 100. Nope, we're done. Done. Done, skis. We gotta, and then we gotta do something really unique and do our top 100 favorite horror movies because nobody's ever done that in the history of forever. Pouring one out for our podcast, for our dead you know, you know what we should also do? We should do a retrospective of Friday the 13th. <laughs> and Nightmare on Elm Street. All of them are very unique. I mean, Mickey's like, I'm not no. Kill me now. And what else could we do that's been, that's never been done before? Really, really unique. Should we review The Shining? <laughs> yeah, 100%. <laughs> have an in-depth conversation about The Shining. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And then we'll watch Heredity and Midsummer back-to-back and do a commentary. See, I'd be fine with that part. It'd be a lot of sadness, wouldn't it? It would be. You could call that a lot of summertime sadness. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no cure for the summertime blues. I'm still laughing. So I guess that makes me God, right? In your fucking face, I wish I had recorded it for, like, what I was telling the sex story. Oh, and oh, I'm like, what? you're like, thumbs up. <laughs> I oh, wish I had done that. Oh my God, Scott, it was so funny. Your <laughs> fucking reaction was the best. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, thank you. Oh, that's a compliment to you. I know. Like, I know. I'm just, like, to this. I'm just Erica, amused. That... Do, you, do you hear this? Here I am trying to be kind. It's just because he's jealous because I'm going to AEW tomorrow. And he's not. You don't even know who's wrestling. You're not even a fan. Well, well, the card's only half been released. Of course I don't you're know. Like, you're like, yay, Roman Reigns. <laughs> I'm like, oh, man, 
god, I can't wait for Trish Stratus to come out. Where's Yay, Rollins? Seth Rollins! Wait, that's not Seth Rollins. <laughs> who's, who's Nick who's, Jackson? Who's Horace Cassidy? Why is he wearing a jean jacket? <laughs> Who is that lazy fruit? Who is that? Who is that guy? Why is he so chill about everything? This is serious. <laughs> Actually, you know who I'm very excited to see tomorrow night is Ethan Page because Ethan Page is from Hamilton. Oh yeah, like so, um, I'm curious though how that I they got to do something with him because uh. Well, the thing like, is, people will Canadians will cheer for a heel. Well, I, I, I know, like I know right? that. No, no, I'm saying they got to do something with him, but. He's in a storyline with Matt and Jeff Hardy, and Matt and Jeff Hardy are not going to be there because Jeff Hardy cannot cross the border because of his felonies from his DUIs. So I'm wondering, they got to have him out there, though, somehow. Oh, well, today he's at a toy drive in downtown Hamilton. Nice. Uh, with Nyla Rose. Um, And so he's actually, like, I followed him on Instagram. He's actually really sweet. You know, and it's always funny. It's always these guys that come across as the biggest pieces of shit that are always, like, super, super nice, right? Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'm sure he'll get a pop. And Christian will get a pop, too. Here's the thing, like, Canadians well, don't give a shit, right? Like, they'll give him a pop, and Jericho will get a pop. and Well, Christian might not be there, because he was already there for Collision. Um, And he, I don't know if you've seen it yet, but, oh, my God. He came out. The crowd was cheering him and just like, oh, yeah, he was there. But then he came out and just insulted everybody and all the cheers turned to booze. <laughs> oh, he might come out then. He'll come out for Hamilton for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. For sure. Hamilton, not yet. Oh, yeah. It's just it down, it's 45 right. minutes away, right? They're right. all well, just. I forgot that uh, Toronto, like, they had two shows in Toronto. There's going to be two shows in Hamilton. I forgot about that part. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh. Yeah, Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, Rob, because you don't fucking understand geography. Waterlog, uh, Ontario, Rob. Wa- waterlog, waterlog. Water me with my thumbs up to everything <laughs> Rob said. Now that's what I'm going to send. <laughs> well, we will be back in a month's time when Scotty is settled with his new living situation and traumatized the kids moving in. They got a lot of films that they got to watch. Um, oh, he has to sit, make them sit through the entire Friday the 13th series. And Solomon. Uh, Oh, well, no, first you got to really, like, make them watch all the Nightmare on Elm Streets, even Freddy's Dead. Um, you got to make sure they watch your favorite, Night, uh, Jason in Space, or Jason X. Who are you trying to uh, traumatize, them or me? All right. Oh, man, what else can you make them watch and that they could become real? All the Halloween movies, all the different pathways for the different Halloween movies. Uh, uh, right? Uh, right? Uh, uh, Right? And then be right. like, this is what you wanted. This is what you wanted to them. They're like, uh, not really. No. Not not what I wanted. You know what I'm still really upset about? And it's the last thing I want to end on. Why have we not got a scary story to tell in the dark sequel yet? Where's where is it, Scott? Probably didn't do that great in theater, so cause the dumbasses decided, hey, you know what? We're going to put this out in summer instead of hollow fucking ween. Do you think that's what happened? Could be. Like, I'm going to put it up, Ryan. Like, I just, it just annoys me that they released that in the summer instead of Halloween. It's like, seriously? Like, it was in August you released it. That should have been an October movie. Like, it doesn't even have a year. It just says, scary stories to tell in the dark to the sequel. Like, nothing. Yeah, but Nothing. it's probably it's probably gonna be just like uh, Trick or Treat too. It's a, uh, eh, it may come out, it may not. We'll see. Honestly, I find that the most disappointing. I fucking love that movie. Loved it. Yeah. That I, great. Uh, anyway, you know what? Hopefully, somehow, somewhere, things will happen, and we'll get a scary story to tell in the dark too. Yeah, you never know. Right? You never know. You may move in and be settled by the end of July, and we may be able to deal to talk about movies again. We will I may be. not have a cold anymore, you know. No, that's that's with you forever. No, just just like herpes. So yeah. thanks everyone for joining. Please join Legion Patreon, like we said earlier, and listen to all of the awesome podcasts we always shout out on this show. We will be back hopefully within a month. If not, you'll see an, see us in August, and hopefully we'll have some new movies by then. We, one can only hope. One can only hope. What other cocaine cocaine guinea pig? Well, mm, we mm. got. We got Crackcoon and Meth Gator coming out at some point. You know what? Those are quality films, too. But anyway, 
Do you have anything else to say to the good people, Scotty? Until next time, everybody. Make sure you wear a parka when you pee. Unpleasant dreams. See you later. Thumbs up. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, God, that was so funny.